If you guys remember, last time we did a team building guide, we worked on Zangoose. We worked on Zangoose last time. We made a really, really cool team around Zangoose that did all the cool stuff with Faint and, you know, immunity and all, all that good stuff. Zangoose is a usable Pokemon in this format. It looks cool. And, uh, you know, a lot of people said, hey, you did Zangoose. You should do one around Saviper as well. So today, we're going to be building around Saviper. I wouldn't say Saviper is as good as Zangoose, but I would say that Saviper does a couple things that Zangoose doesn't really do as well. Yes, they both get faint, but Saviper has a lot more unique support moves that make it a really, really cool Pokemon to use in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet VGC. Saviper. Mm -hmm. It gets Shed Skin and it gets Infiltrator. I would say Shed Skin's probably the better ability because we're going to be going a lot more defensive. But as for the moves that Saviper gets, it gets a bunch of really good ones. It gets Brick Break, Bulldoze, it gets access to like Coil, it gets access to a bunch of like unique special attack moves, it gets access to glare it gets access to gunk shot it gets access to the best move in the game haze it gets access to helping hand with no hands there's a bunch of really really cool things that Saviper does and it's definitely a pokemon you can build around for vgc and i want to say this is going to be for vgc series one because we're going to be testing this but we could also use the viper in series two so let me if you let me know if you want to see more series two teams let me know as well so let's see um I think Saviper, you know, if we take a look at just Poison type, and let's plug this into a damage calculator here, or a damage calculator, a uh, team builder, and go Saviper. Saviper. So you see, it comes with two weaknesses to Psychic and Ground type. So we're going to be adding Mons to help mitigate this stuff. I'm going to take a look at the Ground type first. When you have a weakness to a Ground type, you don't always have to say, okay, I need to add Pokemon that resist Ground type. Now, what you need to do is add Mons that deal with the Pokemon that use Ground-type moves. So, for example, what is the number one Pokemon that pops out when you think of, like, Ground-type moves? It's going to be Garchomp. So, if there's a Pokemon you could add that could both, like, one or two shot the Garchomp or a Pokemon that could heavily mitigate your opponent's use of Garchomp, that might be a really good Pokemon to add here. So, I think the Pokemon that I'm going to want to add in this situation is going to be Tauros. And we're going to use Water Tauros. Um, let's see. Stupid question. Is this for ranked or in showdown or the battle stadium Scarlet Violet? You can use it in both. But if we go back to the uh, damage calculator, we're going to add Palladian Tauros in here. Tauros Agua. Yep. And you can see that gives us a few more weaknesses. We now have weaknesses to electric, grass. Uh, we still have that weakness to ground, but now we've heavily checked it because Tauros gets the intimidate ability. We have a weakness to flying now. Now we have two times weaknesses to psychic and a weakness to fairy. So what we're going to want to add to do next is now that we have two weaknesses to psychic, let's add a mon that deals with psychic types just a little bit, but also helps cover up for that like grass weakness. And, you know, maybe even, maybe even a fairy weakness. I think a really good Pokemon. Also, it's around this time when you start getting your cores built that you might want to think about doing like speed control and so this is where you could pick something like a talon flame or a murkrow if you wanted like a dynamic speed control mon or you could even pick like a trick room core if you wanted to go trick room i think we're gonna go a little bit middle of the pack and we're gonna go volcarona i think volcarona is a really really cool mon to add here if we go back to the team builder um we can go volcarona And so now, you see, we're fleshing out some of these weaknesses. We uh, still have the two weaknesses of Psychic, but now we have a bug type to be able to check mons that use Psychic attacks. Um, we have uh, two times weaknesses to flying on both Tauros and Volcarona. That's going to be a problem. We can definitely deal with that at a later date. But you can see we have a bunch of resistances, and we're on our way to actually fleshing out the rest of our core. Let's read some uh, things in chat. Can't technically survive to be a grass check. Oh, it definitely is a grass check. It definitely is a grass check. We just want to add some more. On a more positive note, your video about how to build teams for ranked helped me make my first ranked team. Thanks for the inspiration to get me into ranked. Well, thank you for thank you for trying. Thank you for trying. Um, yeah, I think this is a really, really good defensive core. Vault can get access to Tailwind in this gen. It can get access to uh, String Shot, which I think is actually really, really good. We're going to be using String Shot in this team uh, when we actually flush everything out. But I think this is a really, really good defensive core. The last thing that we're really going to want to add here as far as like an offensive core, I think Hydreigon is going to be very, very good here. I think Hydreigon's great. If we take a look at what Hydreigon offers this team, thank you for the follow. Um, Hydreigon, if I can type. So Hydreigon, make sure to give it Levitate. 
and you can see Hydragon is another, it's a dark type getting added, so that covers up for a nullification of these two weaknesses Psychic. So yes, we can go really, really weak to Psychic on Survivor Toro Psych, because we can always switch in that Hydragon. So I think it's a really, really smart mod to use here. So Juani Spoil, yo, dropping the sub and Bento Box, also subbing. Yo, we gotta put some subs up for these. We gotta put some subs up for these. Thank you guys. I really appreciate it. I really, really appreciate it. This is our it. course so far. We have Survivor, uh, Palladian Toros Aqua, Volcarona, and Hydragon. So we have Speed Control, we have a Sweeper, we have a Monty Mitigate Physical, uh, and we have a Surviper for like additional support. Remember, we're using a uh, support Surviper. I think the last two mods we probably want to add here are going to be a little bit of redirection and a secondary Sweeper with a good defensive ability. So I'm going to add Indity. I'm going to add Indity Female, and I'm going to add Armor Rouge. Armor we have a team that actually has pretty balanced weaknesses. We don't step into the three weaknesses category at all. And most of the types, other than flying, um, which we can definitely like st steal Terra or something to, to mitigate that, like we're in a really good spot. Two weaknesses the fairy, three resists. Two weaknesses the dark, two resists. Uh, two weaknesses here, three resists, three resists. Uh, we're in a really, really good spot on the resist department. We actually have a lot of resists on this team. So this is a super, super bulky team. And so far, I really, really like this squad a lot. And I think this can actually let us play Survivor to its fullest potential. So now that we have all these mods, let's go back to the team builder and finish uh, adding these guys in. Indeed, if I can type. Indeed and Armor Rouge. And I really like Indeed in this format because this team's a little bit weak to things like Fake Out, a little bit weak to like E-Speed Sweeper. So I really, really like this as well. Bruticus dropping the sub. Appreciate it. Big Caterpie energy. Yo, welcome to the Caterpie Club. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for all the support. Uh, let's start adding some of these Mons movesets. Remember, when we get to this point in the team battle where we know what Mons we want to use, what we want to start doing is just adding moves to each of these Pokemon. We don't need to look at the EVs yet. We don't need to look at abilities. We don't need to look at items. We don't want to lock ourselves into having to play each of these Pokemon in a specific way just yet. We want to add moves that we know we want these Pokemon to do based on their roles, which we talked about a little bit earlier. And uh, yeah, I, I think this is a, a pretty good way to do it. So we're, we know that we're probably going to want... Let's start with the Surviper. I think the coolest thing about Surviper is faint. I think it gets faint, and yes, there is going to be a little bit of psychic train, but like we'll mitigate that. I think you've got to have faint on this Pokemon. This is the number one reason to use it in any team, in my opinion. And then I think the cool thing about Surviper is it gets things like Snarl, and it gets things like Pounce. So this thing is a really, really good support mom because it can mitigate both special attacks. If you if you pair the Snarl with like the Intimidate from the Palladian Tauros, you can mitigate most things. Think of this almost like a dual screens core. And then you also have the pounce for additional speed control if you need it. So it's actually a really, really unique way to play this Pokemon. And I think the last move, we'll save for a little bit later. We'll save for a little bit later. Um, you can use as many pa Paradox Pokemon as you want in Series 2. Um, yeah, as for the Tauros, I know you're going to want the Raging Bull to be able to break screens. I think we probably want Close Combat. And I think we can leave the rest of these moves blank for now because we don't exactly know if we want something else. But I think this is a good way to, I think this is fine just to leave it like this for now. So let's go to Valk, and with Valk, I really think we could we could definitely go Tailwind, but I think we're gonna want to go uh uh what String Shot. I think String Shot is gonna be just a little bit better, and so I like the String Shot here. Do we get Palm Pup on Valk? Nah, we don't. Never lucky. But String Shot's really really good, and I'm just gonna leave that like that for now. We don't need to flesh out anything else in the Valk. I think it's absolutely fine. Hydreigon's gonna need um. Do we want Draco? I'll go Draco. Draco's fine. Draco, Dark Pulse, and then we'll probably just, uh, you know, leave the rest of it blank for now. Indity is definitely going to want um, Follow Me. Definitely put that Follow Me on there first. And then we're going to add, um, we're going to definitely add Protect. You always want to add Protect to your uh, Redirection Mons. And we're going to leave the rest of this blank. I don't think we're going to be going with an Imprisoned set on this one, but uh, I do think it's absolutely fine. And then for this guy, this is a really weird one because like you could do so many different things with this guy. It gets access to Destiny Bond, Ally Switch, Armor Cannon, Heat Wave, Clear Smog, Disable, Fling. Like there's so many different things this guy gets. It's absolutely ridiculous. It gets Wide Guard. I think we're probably going to want the Wide Guard. I think Wide Guard's a good option here. Wide Guard is a good option against a lot of teams. I don't mind the Heat Wave. Heat Wave's going to be good. Yo, Single Shot Gamer gifting us sub. Appreciate it, yo. Appreciate the sub gifts. Yo, we hit the sub goal. We'll do more guides. We'll do more guides. Thank you. Let's put the, let's put some subs up for that. Sorry, I know I'm going way too fast. I'm going way too fast. I'm not reading chat enough. Um, but, you know, I always like to get this stuff out of the way. It loves Psychotrain. It really does. We're going to be using Expanding Force as well. 
thank you so much for all the gifted subs. Yo, uh, you know, um, Januarys are always really rough for content creators. Like, YouTube ad revenue gets destroyed, and it's it's hard. It's hard being a content creator at the start of the year. So I appreciate, I appreciate literally every single sub gift. Thank you so much. I really, really do appreciate it. It helps out so much. You have no idea. Um, but yeah, we're going to add, definitely, we're going to add Expanding Force. And then we're gonna leave this last move blank. So now that we have most of our moves here, we can start adding in like abilities just to make sure they have the right ability. We know we want flash fire on this guy. We know we want the psychic surge on this. This guy comes with levitate. This comes with flame body, which is gonna be better than swarm in most situations. Intimidates the ability that we want here. And I think Shedskin's probably better um, just cause you can cure yourself of like spores and stuff like that. You're not gonna really need infiltrator on a set like this. Back on this team, I really do think, though, that the cool thing that Survivor brings to the table that, like, Zangoose doesn't really bring to the table is its access to this move right here, and that's going to be Wrap. I think Wrap's actually really, really underrated. Um, it traps the target and deals damage for four to five turns, but it's something that's so unique. Being able to trap things is such an underrated mechanic, and I think Survivor's a really good Pokemon to be able to do that correctly. And there's something you're going to notice when we add, like, items to this team. Like, I feel this just works really, really good. I think Trap Survivor, yeah, it's going to be really, really good. Um, and I think that you can mostly just use Snarl, Snarl, Pounce, and Faint, and just weave in a wrap whenever you want to, and then they can't switch, and then if they can't switch, they're going to protect, and then you faint, right? It's so good. It's so good, I promise. Now, you see we have a bunch of things that lower stats. So things like Snarl, things like Pounce, things like String Shot. This is where I want to talk a little bit about the Tauros uh, before we actually flush out how it actually... Um, why, why are we using Tauros on this team? I want to use a Mirror Herb Tauros. Um, I've heard people talking about this Mirror Herb Tauros, so when you intimidate something, it procs a Defiant, you copy the stats that the Defiant gets, so you get a plus two boost off that. Same thing works if you Snarl, if you Pounce, uh, if you String Shot. So this is why we're using String Shot over Tailwind, because I want to be able to String Shot and lower your speed so I can activate my Mirror Herb, take boost, and just like one shot you. Really, really cool stuff. I think it's actually going to be really, really fun. Um, and let's just start fleshing out the rest of this team. I definitely think we're going to want Protect here. I don't know exactly what other move I want on this Tauros. I don't think we need any other support moves. I don't think it gets like taunt. I think I'm probably just going to go Trailblaze. I like Trailblaze. It's probably one of my favorite new moves in this gen. Being able to get a random plus one speed that they're not really expecting uh, is really, really good. I think it's super, super underrated. And yeah, I think maybe we might want to go Terra Blast here instead. But I like the Trailblaze. I think Trailblaze is actually a lot of fun on this set. So I'll go with Trailblaze. As for the Vulk, we definitely want Protect. Definitely gonna have protect in your Volks. And then I'm probably gonna go like uh, Rage Powder Fiery Dance. That's just what I'm gonna try. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But I, I'm i gonna try this set and hope that it gets something done. I don't really think we need like a Bug Buzz per se. Usually the, just having a Volk is usually enough to scare off most Mons that would, like most Psychic Mons. So I think this is probably fine. And then for the Hydragon, we're probably gonna want the protect. And we could go with a Terra Blast here. We could go with a Heat Wave as well and be a Fire Terra. We already have two Fire Mons. So I don't necessarily know if that's what I want to do. Um, we could do a couple other things as well. We could just go with an Earth Power. Ooh, we could just go Stealth Rocks. That's so cool. This thing gets Stealth Rock. It gets Taunt. I'm going to go Taunt, actually. That sounds like a lot of fun. I'll go Taunt. I always forget Hydrogen gets Taunt. That's really, really cool. I'll just go Taunt. You think Trick Room Meowth is good? Yeah, it's okay. Um, you don't need to make it like zero speed. You just throw Trick Room on it. It's just a really, really good Mon. Um, Indity, let's think about what we actually want to do with this thing. I don't think there's a problem with going, like, a Trick Room on this thing. I think Trick Room is probably a good set to have on this guy. And then as for the last slot, it really depends on what you want to do with this Indity. We're going to put Psychic here. And it's going to be built a little bit different from how I've played it in the past. Um, and everyone's going, like, why don't you just use Expanding Force? Indity does not get Expanding Force in this gen, so you can't use Expanding Force. How does this team beat... Fairy Terra Skeledurge. I mean, you can hit it in the face with so many different things. Fairy Terra Skeledurge would struggle with Seviper. You can just snarl it out forever. Tauros would still be dealing neutral damage to it. Uh, Vault could redirect it because it's going to be a single target mon. Fairy Terra Skeledurge. Hydragon doesn't really work against it, but like Armor Rouge can just blow it the hell up, right? So stuff like that. And also like, so another thing about like, whenever you're looking at a team, like realistically, what you need to be doing when someone says like, well, how do you beat this? It's like, you got to think of like how common that, that actual tech is. Like realistically, you can go to your, you can go to your usage stats, right? These are usage stats for Scarlet and Violet VGC Series 1. So Fairy Terra Skeledurge is, 8 per, Skeledurge itself, is at an 8% usage rate. 
right? And if we go down to common terras, I don't even know if they have like a common terra yet. It looks like they don't. Um, but realistically, like an 8% usage mon, I'm not going to be basing my whole strategy on how to beat like an 8% usage mon. I'm going to be building teams to beat the mons up here, which is why armor is good here. Armor is good here. Armor is good here. Armor is good here. Is why so we use now these that we things. got most of our moves set, right? Cool. We can start working on our items. Uh, I realistically think I want to use an assault vest here. I probably, like I said, using the mirror herb there. We don't know exactly what we want to do with this bulk yet, but I'll throw a citrus on it for now. Uh, the hydragon. I was going to say put orb here, but I really think I want to sash this. I know it sounds really weird, but I'm going to sash the hydragon. Um, and then NDD. NDD is a weird one. Like we could put the psychic seeds. But I want to say there's value in Rocky Helmet as well. We'll leave this blank for now. And then the Armor Rouge. What do we want to do with Armor Rouge? We could put the Orb on here. I don't think there's a problem with putting an Orb on the Armor Rouge. It does so much damage with Orb. And then what do we want to do with this NDD? There's so many good items we could do here. Hmm. Rocky Helmet? No, nah, you don't want to put Rocky Helmet on a bulk. You can put Rocky Helmet here. Yeah, I don't, I don't mind that. Rocky Helmet's fine. Cool. So we have all of our items. We have all of our moves. Let's go into some of our E's here. For Survivor, it doesn't really have like that high base HP. So you definitely want to start this off by just going full HP on this thing. Um, it's not going to give me sure it turns or anything. It's going to be fine. And uh, I think as far as like the rest of the stats go, Sparper's a really, really unique Pokemon because it has 100 in both its offensive stats, which you don't really see that often. Um, I think, I don't think we need like any investment in these things. Um, I think we're probably going to want to have on average more defense than special defense, uh, just so we can switch in better on Meow Scarada. So I'm going to go with like a 204 spread, 204 plus probably, and go with the speed drop right there i'm gonna put actually i'm gonna put a little bit in speed because we want this to double into being faster than some pokemon in after a uh after a string shot right so we want to still work in tail we want to be faster than some things so we're going to go to here go to Survivor, and we need to be faster than base 100s i would say i would say base 100s is a pretty good number so something like a salamence salamence is a pretty popular base 100 and by proxy outspeeding a Salamence, such outspeed Hydrogons and all those other things. So let's see what like a Timid Salamence, 167. So we need to get to 168 from a plus two, which would be the same thing as our String Shot. And we're already technically there, so we don't need to do that much more. Um, let's check out some other Pokemon that are maybe a little bit faster. So you can do that by sorting this by speed here. So we're going to be 100s. Look at how many Pokemon are base 100. Things like Volcarona, um, things like Plutian Toro, Staraptor, Salamence, Palafin, um... Let's go a little bit higher. Maybe we outspeed Garchomp. Let's see how much we need to outspeed Garchomp, which would be like a 102 here. Once again, we still outspeed that, so it's really nice to know we outspeed Garchomp, one of our main checks. Um, let's go back over here and keep going. It's not really worth it outspeed any of these. Is it worth it outspeed any of the 110s? So things like Frostlass, Espeon. Um, I'd say it's worth it outspeed Espeon. It's worth it outspeed Jumpluff um, if we have a Tailwind up. So let's see how much we need to outspeed Jumpluff and Gengar and Espeon by proxy, 178. So we would have to put in about 60 points, maybe a little bit less actually. It's just 36, right? Yeah, we'll put in the 36 to be able to outspeed that. Cool. So this lets us outspeed base 110s from a plus two from our, uh, from our string shot. Cool. All right, and the rest of our EVs, we can just throw them in here. We just go 12-4. Pretty easy EV spread for the Surviper. Um, very, very defensively bulky. We can pair that with the Tauros and get even bulkier from the Intimidate. So good stuff. I like this a lot. And uh, just let Surviper sit on the board as long as possible. As for the Tauros, I don't think we need like that much speed investment at all. This is going to be able to outspeed Pult at plus two. This is going to be able to outspeed base... Um, what is it? It's going to be able to outspeed base 110s at plus one. So this is going to go to 180. The same thing Survivor will be doubling into. So we actually don't need any speed on this thing. We're going to go 12 just to make sure we're speed creeping the right things. We're going to go a full HP investment on this guy. And then I don't actually know how much like offense I really want on Tauros. I really don't think we need a ton. I think it'd be better off playing it more defensive. but Because we're going to get a plus two a lot of the time from Mirror Herb copying Defiant boosts. So yes, we could put a ton in here. But we'd also just put like a ton in bulk as well. Let's see. Let's actually start this off with like a 100. 100. And then like a 44 plus. I think that's probably a good way to do it. 
and uh, let's see what that looks like after a few test games. This lets us be as very, very bulky, um, and hopefully, you know, bulky enough. I don't know if we want to keep close combat, so we'll see if we actually want to keep the close combat. I'm actually thinking, like, what do we need close combat for? We could put EQ on there. We could put Rock Slide on there. I'm trying to think of what we actually need, like, close combat for. It's stab, so I guess we'll just keep it, but yeah, let's see how it works. For the Vulk, though, same thing as the Taurus. We don't need to be that fast, but we want to show that our Vulk could be potentially faster. So we're going to be a little bit faster than the Speed Creep. Go 252 HP here. And then as for Vulk, we don't need, like, any special attack investment at all. I think Vulk's actually better built off as a special defense Pokemon because it covers up for this team's two fairy weaknesses very well. So we switched this thing on Hyper Voices. So I'm actually, like, a really, really big fan of, like, 156. Um, and then we go 68. And then, what was it? Yeah, just 12 in special attack. These are just extra points. We can even go with a 76 4. And so we're big special defense bulk. Like, this is one of my absolute favorite sets. And if we change its terror type to something else as well, uh, we can even block other types of stuff like that. So, really, really good stuff. I think this is a good bulk set and it's not wasting any points. Um, this works. Also, note that we're keeping all these mods. We're not going heavy on the speed stats. We're going just enough speed to be able to function with a plus two from the uh, string shot here. So, I actually really, really like this. And. Another thing is we're actually still enough to work inside of a Trick Room if we actually want to use Trick Room. So I really, really like this a lot. I will say about this Hydreigon, I'm actually going to take off Taunt for Tailwind in case we need like an additional Speed Creep on. What you should always be trying to do is double up on the things that you're doing right and double up on your win condition. So we don't want to make Vulk be the only win condition for like Speed Control other than Entity. We want two things that can set Tailwind or be like aggressive. So we have like String Shot and Tailwind over here. We have Trick Room over here. And we're also actually, I think, I think we could Trick Room instead of the Clear Smog here. I think it's still probably right. I don't know how this team deals with Dozo, though, otherwise. I don't know how this team deals with Dozo other than cycling out Tauros. Tauros and Survivor, like, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Which, like, isn't even wrong. To cycle out Tauros back and forth, back and forth, and just protecting with a teammate is probably good. We can even wrap down the, the Dozo. That'd be really funny. And then eventually we can just Terra Blast out the Dozo and just do a ton of damage. Let's think about that. Do I even need to do that, though? No, we still want to be Grass Terra. Anyways, um, let's just do that. And then I think Unity is enough for the Trick Room. I don't think we need... I think I want to keep the Cure Smog. I want to try it. But Hydreigon, very, very easy EV spread over here. 252. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Um, Unity, 252 over here. And what website is this for Team Lane? This is Pokemon Showdown. Um, and I'm actually going to give myself a full defense build. A full defense build. I don't. You don't really see me do this that often. Um, but I think a full defense build is actually going to be really good here. So we can maximize the use of our Rocky Helmet as much as possible. And we're going to keep the IVs in speed. Uh, I think it's a good way to do it. No Poison Moon Survivor? Nope, it doesn't have an, any attack mechanism, so it doesn't actually need it. It's not about dealing damage to support mod. So, yep, pretty easy EV spread for the Unity. If we really wanted to min-max, what we could do is go 244 and cut this up into, like, a 4-4 spread as well. And there's nothing wrong with that. So a 4-4-4 spread, 2v2, 2v2. As for the Armor Rouge, I'm orbed here, so, like, there's nothing wrong with going, like, big here we could even cut this clear smog for like terror blast and probably have a pretty good time let's just do that let's play standard there's no reason to get like spicy with that because we can just go follow me for like two turns against the dozo and basically be fine i'm gonna try this except for we're gonna take some of this out so we take less damage from our life orb this makes us take just one little tick less from our life orb every single time and then we just throw the rest of these stats basically wherever we want we're gonna throw them into the spadef because again this thing switches in on uh, special attacks like hyper voices a little bit easier so we're gonna go with uh i'm actually not gonna use zero speed here either we want to be able to outspeed very specific pokemon in the tailwind so we need to get this to not already outspeeds him we'll throw four in here i think so like a four four twenty spread so we're just using all of our stats correctly that's basically just what you're doing here and this team's pretty easy you don't need any zero speed mons um Pretty easy peasy lemon squeezy here, team. Last thing we want to do is mess with your Terras. As far as this team goes, we want Grass Terra here. I think Grass Terra is very standard, but I think it still works. Uh, we want the Indity to be... Pro I'm going to say Water Terra. I think that sounds really weird. Or maybe... maybe You don't want Dragon. This is one of the few situations where you could go Dragon, but we're using this to wall Dozo, right? So I think you could go Grass here, too. I'm going to go Grass so we just can't get uh, spored by Amoongus. Grass does the same thing. Hydragon, um, don't necessarily need dark. We're not going to be using anything weird here. Hmm. Let's see what we want to do with Hydragon. I don't actually hate Ghost on Hydragon. Because it lets me do what I want. And it lets me avoid, like, uh, normal attacks and stuff like that. You, you could say Steel, but I don't want to go Steel. I'm going to try Ghost. 
Um, and then Volk, this will be Grass as well, probably. Um, just big checks to Dozo. Grass Volk's really, really strong. And then Grass here. So many Grass Terras. And then the Survivor doesn't need to be Grass. Survivor would probably benefit better from Ghost. Um, just being able to avoid Fake Outs. It's Fake Outs, it's E-Speeds. Yes, we have Entity for that, but like, it's still stuff like this. It lets us avoid Fighting Attacks as well. Not as common, but also like letting Hydreigon avoid Fighting Attacks with Ghost Terra. It's pretty cool. So pretty easy Terras. And uh, overall, pretty solid team. So let's go play some games and see how First it First game here, Goth. And so because we have these Ghost Terra um, Ons on Survivor and Hydreigon, we can actually cycle through this if they want to Shadow Tag us. But very, very cool squad. They got the Fake Out on the Goth. They got the Murkrow. This is one of the situations where I don't think Volk is actually terrible. Like, one string shot and, like, half those guys are sad. And if we intimidate into the King Gambit, we actually copy it. So I'm actually going to lead Tauros here. I think Tauros is a really, really good lead versus things like Garchomp and Titar. And it can soft check things like the King Gambit as well. It's okay versus Murkrow. Just have to watch out for burns from the uh, Houndstone. So I actually think, like, Tauros Entity is probably really good here. We're supposed to be featuring Survivor, so we will bring it, even though it's probably not great. And then let's see what we actually want in the back. We might end up more of a Trick Room Core. I don't think you need the Hydreigon here because it just gets its Sash broken right there. Gets checked by a couple of those guys. I think Vault could be okay. I think Armor Rouge is okay. Hmm. I'm bringing the Vault. Secondary Redirection Montfortoros could be good. But then like we are like out of damage, you know? Maybe that means we have to bring Hydreigon. We have to bring Hydreigon then. Yep. We just don't want any more damage if we don't do it. So Titar and Goth. So big Intimidate here. Love this for us. So let's think about what we want to do. That He's probably going to go Flying Terra. We can just redirect. I have absolutely no problem with just like Raging Bowling right there and just clicking Follow Me. I want to see what they do. Raging Bull, good damage to that Titar. We're just going to eat this. Light Screen. Dude, dude, we can just Light Screen things though. <laughs> it's fine with me. I mean, not light screen. We can just Raging Bull. Raging Bull. We can't switch. We're stuck here. I'm surprised that they used light screen. I mean, I guess we could just close combat it. They might be switching. It's hard to say. Weird light screen. Maybe that entity was going to like do something weird. But the taunt's good. You don't really see taunt as often. Let's see what they do. I will definitely uh, try and do something with the Tauros here. We don't need to go Terra yet. I don't think there's a reason. We don't have that much offense. I'd be really surprised if that Titar went flying like a turn later. There's a, tar there's a Garchomp switching. That's fine. Protect. We don't really care. And we take a little bit of damage here. And we can't redirect just yet. We don't necessarily need to Terra. I actually think it's probably not the right idea to Terra because they're probably good. Well, they might just Psychic us. You know what? Let's Terra just so we don't get KO'd by Psychic. And... Uh, I wonder if Terra Blast makes contact. No, we actually need to close combat still here. Do we, though? They're going to be outspeeding us anyways. We can actually just Protect here for one turn and weave in a Psychic into that Garchomp slot. It's actually going to do a lot. Yep, absolutely no reason to play. Yep, that's a good play from us. So now we can switch the Indy out if we want. Garchomp takes Live Orb damage. Psychic, like, oh, that's so good for us. That's so good. Value protect. Rageable break screens, I'm pretty sure. And it, it sorry, if it does not miss, yep. So we can just break the screens here. It's probably gonna be grass terra, sorry, flying terra titar now. This is our last turn of taunt. So we're gonna psychic into that slot. I think we're just gonna pivot in. Um two turns left on Sanders. The last turn that actually deals damage. We're gonna bring Hydra out after this. We're gonna pivot in the Survivor and just click psychic into the Garchomp. This is where we save our intimidate for a little bit later. Helping hand, go nuts, Chief. Big EQ, bro. Everyone dies, and then he dies with the orb, bro. Go nuts, chief. We take those all the way to the bank. That's funny. Hey, we take those. Um, That should be all their mons, right? Now they have one more, right? They have a Bisharp, right? One, two, three. Show me Bisharp. Is it Houndstone or Bisharp? Houndstone. Ah, never lucky. It's okay. This is its last turn of Sandstorm, so we just double protect. Easy peasy. We're using a Mirror Herb on the Tauros. That, that Garchomp literally clicked Explosion, bro. Dude, Ghost Terra, not bad. He's gonna he's gonna try and last respect us out, but like, nope. We got Sash anyways, even if we needed it. But we wait out the last turn of Sandstorm here. And, uh, oh, that that should have actually waited out the last turn of Sandstorm, but that Titar had the, uh, the Sand Rock. Dude, that actually sucks. 
that's really, really not good. Um, and we don't want to tear a ghost. We're just going to die here. Hey, that was such a good play. We should have just attacked, I guess. He's protecting, making us take more chip. I guess we could double protect into then losing him on next turn. And that, yeah, that's fine. That's the right play. Because we're going to lose something anyways. I wonder if they have a Sash on the Houndstone. If they have Sash on the Houndstone, they might win. Yawn. Oh my gosh, that ain't a cheap. And then we don't need to tear it here. We just would lose the Hydragon. That's fine. All right, let's see it. Yawn into the Hydragon. Yeah, we're fine. Yay! Oh, it's a Citrus. Not bad. Stand some sides now. Now we just outspeed with everything. They're going to protect here to make our Hydron go to sleep, so we don't need to waste our protect back. And just stay in. Yep. So, closer than it should have been, but we still take the win. Closer than it should have been, but we still take the win. Last respects. Oh, man, I'm surprised I actually did that much. But we're super bulky. Remember those Eevees that we were talking about? Them Eevees, boys. That's a 200-something. That's a huge attack. And we're just, like, eating it. Eating Brain it. with Raichu Gastro. We have a lot of Grass Mons, so we're probably fine. I think we're just going to lead Indidy and just get the Mouse off the board that way. Nothing Defiant procs, and nothing to really bring Tauros as a lead for. I'm going to try Seviper. I think Seviper could be really cool here. Seviper Indidy sounds fun. Um, Hydragon is good late-game cleanup Mon. It's not good versus Zoomerill, though. I don't know if I want that. I don't really like any of these versus Zoom Roll, though. I'll bring the Armor Rouge for sure. And, like, I'm thinking if I even want Hydragon. Bulk's not good. Tauros isn't that great. It's going to be Hydragon, then. Cool. All right. Big Rain Squad. Holy moly. Huh. I mean, follow me is fine here. What's the highest you've gotten in ranked double so far? I've been in ranked one before. Let's see. You don't really need to pounce. I think Rap is actually okay versus Zoomerill. If this is, like, realistically, am I wrong? Like, is this the right play? What are you doing? Protect Bro, is that Tailwind here? No way, Tailwind here. You should just be going for damage. Like, Hurricane here is really good versus both these. That's the right. That's wrong. Ego Nuts, the Chuck. All right, we're gonna be fine. Okay, surf, get the procs, not bad, not bad. Rap is so nice here though, dude, rap is so good. All right. Great damage in that Pelver. Once you get Pelver off the board, it's going to be a lot easier to do. We don't even need Sviper anymore. Like, you can go for a Surfer, you can do other things. Like, we just bring out the, uh... What is it? We just bring out, um... This guy. And Terra Blast the Gastro and just Psychic. We don't even need to, like, do anything weird. Muscle's pretty good. Yeah. Yeet. Yeet. All right, so we still have an Azumarill, but we have Grass Terra, and we still have a, we have a, still Expanding Force up, so we can actually just go Redirection and just Expanding, I think. It's probably the right play. Because you know they're going to tear into something weird, right? Why Terra Boss not Energy Ball? I eh, probably should put Energy Ball on it. You're right. Yeah, we'll fix that. I think I've done that a couple times. It's just where this thing even gets Energy Ball. Belly drum, bro. That's incorrect. I think. I think that's probably wrong. Yeah. <laughs> we gotta use Seviper. That's the whole point of this is to use Seviper, right? Not like this, dude. Not that that's a plus one tech. I mean, if you think I'll let you do that, 
go nuts. I'm actually gonna try this. I think this could be really good. So Viper Entity like cycles into the slacking. Like I love that. Um, need they have screen. So Tauros is great. And then with these guys, I think Hydreigon's still good because it checks that and it checks that unless they go Fairy Terra. Armorouge is probably good versus most of them though. So I'll go Armorouge. It can hit most of those. It struggles a little bit versus the Hydreigon, but like our Tauros checks Hydreigon. So Hydreigon and Oink Cologne. Hmm. I'm going to Snarl and just follow me. I think they're going to yawn. You know what? I'm going to Snarl and actually just pop a Protect. I don't want to eat a Draco. Or, a, sorry, a Dark Pulse here. But they probably also think about yawning. Dark Pulse blocked. Awesome. Snarl. We outspeed the Oink Cologne. Easy peasy. Special attack drop, sash broken, stuffed cheeks, defense, sharply boosted. All right, that's fine. Like we can actually just pop that thing with like so many other mons. Um, at this point, I think you just would pounce here, and you'd switch in Tauros in on the Dark Pulse. Dude, imagine if Tauros Mirror Herb took those stats though. <laughs> This is where if we wanted to like get our Hydreigon in, like let's say we swap, let's say we, we were switching our Hydreigon in on a Dark Pulse here and we wrapped in that Hydreigon, we'd make it so they wouldn't be able to switch away from our Hydreigon. Remember, we already have a special attack drop on them so we don't really have to care as much. And we could have also gotten a speed drop on them the first turn if we wanted to. And then from there, if they wanted to protect, yes, there's a Psychic Terrain on the board, but they're levitating. So we could actually faint them and break them and pin them with our own Hydreigon. So it's it's a really, really cool play. Yawn into the Survivor Assault, that's fine. Just came from Twitter, what are you cooking up? That's a yo, the good stuff, yo. All right, so speed dropped and pounced up. Let's think about what we want to do here. I don't know how much I care about that Oink Cologne. Like, it has Yawn, yes, but, like, I don't think I care that much. We're just going to pivot out there. I kind of want to just protect with Tauros for a turn because they're going to Yawn here and probably hit that slot. Would you Yawn? Would you hit that slot with the Drake with the Dragon Pulse? Or Dark, Dark, Dark Pulse, sorry. I don't think I need to go after this guy as much, and there's no reason to go after that guy just yet. Pivots, absolutely fine. Air Balloon, wow. Cool. Body press, nah, -uh, fam. So let's think about what we want to do here. They have two turns on Tailwind. Um, I think we're fine to just stay in here. I almost want to say we Trick Room here. I do think we Trick Room here. We Trick Room and pivot in the armor rouge and we're just gonna like heat wave out this might be wrong but we'll see nasty plot bro ah, fuck really that sucks dude it's fine we gotta switch we'll switch in so viper good play from our opponent by the way this is great we should still be fine we probably still under speed that gold angle with our trick room is trick room any loud yep 100 percent that was a good yawn into that slot. I really thought they'd yawn. The, you should always be yawning the entity, I think. But I've already shown an affinity for protecting it, so. And we're going to protect it this turn. There's absolutely no reason to, like, try to attack things, you know? I don't think there's a reason to, like, try to attack things with entity right now. Especially that Oink one. It's, like, really, really big. The only thing we're going to be able to do is, like, pop that thing with a heat wave. Switching out of a nasty pop mon. Wow. Okay. And they have protect. So they've shown all their moves, right? They have stuff cheeks, yawn, body press, protect. Cool. So we have Ghost Terra on none of the ones that we brought. Wait. We have Ghost Terra and Viper. So they can't hit Viper if it's just Oink Cologne. Just throwing that out there. They cannot hit us at all. That's really cool to know. We could Snarl here and pivot back in. They probably have lefties, right? All right, so we're going to go pivot in of the Armor Rouge, right? and go for a wrap into the Hydreigon. Nice. So you can't switch away now. God damn it, they always go into that slot though. No! Ah! Damn it. That sucks, it's all right. That was like our win condition. I got a little bit greedy. It can protect, but it can't switch. Scyther, or sorry, uh, we just go for the close combat and take all the damage in the world. 
Oof, that hurt, man. I can't believe they doubled into that slot. They literally doubled into that slot, man. They went Yawn and Dark Pulse They just ignored Survivor. It's okay. I think we still technically can win with Survivor if we take out the right Mons. It's just that it's going to be really, really hard to get the Gold Angle off the board. Does it get a good ability? It has uh, Shed Tail. Or uh, Shed Skin or something. Yeah. So that guy's gone. Shurkrim's almost done. But we're still going to be struggling for how to beat the Gold Angle, I think. Gold Angle is going to be hard to deal with. I wonder what else they have, too. Did they show slacking? This is the last turn Trick Room. It's a gold angle. Okay. You have to pivot in the Unity here. And, like, realistically, you would just Snarl, I think. Potty Press doesn't do, like, anything to this guy, so it's fine. I mean, it does stuff, but, like, if we can get just Oink Clone versus Viper, we win. They can't hit us if we Terra. Cool beans. Goldango gets that stat drooped. Ow. Nasty pot's fine. They're gonna go body press into that slot. They're gonna go body press into that slot and probably make it rain. We'll just protect, and then maybe we'll try and eat it. Protect here, pivot in this Tauros on the next turn. Really? Ow! The Snarl did so much. Or the Shadow Ball did so much. Yep. Good play from our opponent. Yeah, they, they're dumpstering us here. They got us. Play. I liked uh, Entity Survivor. I, th I thought it played the matchup like at a pretty decent pace. Hydragon is decent versus this squad, and bring Armor Rouge in the back. Armor Rouge is a cool mod. I like it. Changes move in the middle of battle. Well, no, it doesn't change it in the middle of battle. It changes it for the next one. So what does the Viper do? Bunch of stuff. It gets Snarl, it gets Pounce, it gets Faint, it gets Wrap. I think Wrap's a very, very underrated mechanic, being able to trap things, especially in these, like, weather matchups. All right. Indeed. And Drift Bloom. Psychic Seeds up. So let's think about this. Are you going to be using a Minimize set? And what are you coming in with? Scizor, maybe? I don't see an issue with Snarl here. You're all special attackers other than your Scizor, and I'm pivoting in a Armor Rouge, so, like, we're fine. No, it's just a Trick Room team. Is Armor Rouge Sarah Witch from all the Dark Pokemon around? No, it's just, I like Armor Rouge better. I think it's it's AoE. Okay, one's fine. Ow! Fuck, dude! Psy Shock, dude, we're vested! That's such a good play from them. I like that. I like it. Go nuts. Such a good play. That's crazy. Psy Shock, I th it orbed too. Like, what the fuck, bro? <laughs> Ugh. That hurts, man. That hurts. Orb, Psychic Surge, like, Psy Shock Entity to fight our vested Surviper. The Surviper checks are real. Indeed. The funny thing is, like, it probably doesn't have any other attacks. It should just be like Psychic Spoon or Twisted Spoon, you know? Because that shouldn't have KO'd us. And this Expanding Force is not going to do that much, but then we're just going to set up to, like, outvalue them with our Trick Room. They're thinking about switching Impeliper to stop Heat Wave. That's what they're big thinking of. Uh, it's more special defense, but it's a lot of special attack because we're orbed as well. I see one's absolutely fine. TY. Psy Shock, absolutely fine. Take some more orb damage, buddy. Big, look at that damage. That's like absolutely disgusting amounts of damage. So, we underspeed them now, and Expanding Force should KO both. Yep, so we just Expanding Force. 
And we actually take the free switch to like pivot in our Hydreigon. So that way we have Hydreigon already up to be able to pin the Pelipper and stuff like that. Can Glare paralyze electric ground types? Yep, it can. We're not using Glare though, we're using a vested set. We're using that Rap Tech. They can go with Protects here. Um, I don't think that they will. Switch, bro. Nice. Double switch, bro. Nice. Easy damage. Do you see how much damage that is? That's like actually just redonkulous how much damage that is, dude. I can't even believe it. Psychic? Okay. You were already psychic. <laughs> Got it. So that's the thing is they we trickered on their tailwinds. So that's why they're we're still slower than their scissor there. What are they gonna lead? They're probably gonna go annihilate mousehold, right? That's the tech. That's just what you do. Murkrow and Hydragon. Okay, that also works. Nothing wrong with that. A little bit of matchup roulette. So we just follow me here. I mean, in this case scenario, there's so many different things you can do. You can go tailwind dark pulse, and we can go protect to stop that, but like you shouldn't be able to really hit this guy unless you're brave burning, which would get checked by follow me so like i don't mind protect and close combat in this exact situation hatterene switching on that's absolutely fine it's good damage for us tailwind's fine they're still not fast enough to actually do stuff in tailwind this is a weird situation though i don't really like this board for me i don't want to switch in either of these Okay, are you trick rooming? Go nuts, like trick room. When you after you tailwinded. Awesome. We're a little pinned here. Take a dark pulse there. We'd have to switch in here and get KO'd. I guess we just have to Terra. Focus energy, bro. I'm just not going to let you get away with that. Like, <laughs> you can't just focus energy in my face. Single target. Almost gets the KO. Wow. That doesn't a lot of damage. Kills the Tauros, but, like, we're still chunking away with the Armor Rouge. So I think you just bring out the Entity here, and you just redirect and Heat Wave again. Finish off the hat. They have to have some sort of AoE. Yeah, Entity's great here. We probably win. I'm actually just going to click the Expanding, because that's probably enough. Follow me. Just bricks the mouse hold up. Now let's see it. And their last one's Murkrow back there. Which we can check Murkrow with uh, Hydreigon. It's not a great check, but like, yo, this population bomb these. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Again. Do it again. Oh, that's so good though. Single target. You think you can do these things, but you just can't mouse hold, bro. Let me take those. Cool. I'd say this team works. Works about as good as you would think a team should work. Uh, I like the Entity Core. Uh, I like the Hydragon. Volk's here for, like, making them not bring the things we don't want them to bring. Um, it also, like, kind of says... It, it takes a lot of the pressure off Armor Rouge for the most part, right? Because if Armor Rouge is our only file type, Fire type and they know that they have like all these good Steel Mons, they can really put pressure on just doing things that make it really hard to use Armor Rouge. But Volk's built a little bit differently. It adds a second potential Tailwind Setter, a little bit more redirection, a little bit more potential speed control to the mix. So that's one of the reasons why we didn't really bring the Volk, but it's still like a usable Mon for influencing the team preview. I think the Survivor was fun. We got a couple good pins with like things like Rap. Uh, we used Fane a couple times. Pounce Snarl, it was good. Taurus was okay. And uh, into the armors, you're just really, really strong. People should still use these guys. They're great.